Most humans could have the entirety of their fleeting lives chronicled in but a few short lines. Their stories really make for terribly dull reading. Ah, it looks like all our problems are solved. Welcome to the Jade Chamber. Oh, great. <laughs> I have no idea what we would have done otherwise. I didn't think we'd really manage to get you here. This was a last-minute situation, and you're the one we trust the most. To put it simply, we are just looking for the right person to help. We had a very long discussion about it, but to no avail. I have tasked my three most trusted secretaries with overseeing an important auction tomorrow. This, however, leaves their regular duties unattended to, and the work cannot afford to go undone. The nature of their day-to-day -day work is highly sensitive and confidential, so whomever I ask to fill in needs to be someone I can trust, and who doesn't have a conflict of interest. Yes. You were the person who came to mind. We may not have spent a great deal of time together, but I do place a great deal of trust in you. To me, this work is highly sensitive and of utmost importance, though I'm sure you'll find it to be mundane at best. It would not surprise me if you can't bear the tedium or can't make the time. And yet, despite this, I thought it could do no harm to ask the question on the off chance that you are interested. As it happens, I was just having a discussion on backup plans with my secretaries before you arrived. But the outcome of that discussion was that we couldn't think of a suitable alternative. This is a good reminder that we should always have a contingency plan for everything. Anyway, this may add to the debt of gratitude I owe you, but the fact is, your arrival here has rescued what was fast becoming a rather dire situation indeed. I wouldn't worry. It's all work you'll be quite familiar with. Planning trips, gathering pertinent information, that sort of thing. All basic skills required by competent adventurers, if I'm not mistaken. If you have any questions about your work, I will answer them shortly. The administrative work Lady Ningguang touched upon just now is only one aspect. You'll also be required to cater for Lady Ningguang's basic daily needs, such as clothing and meals, and be on call for any other requests she may have. Don't be mistaken. I won't put you in a difficult position, and I will fully respect your judgment. All right. Please proceed to the office. Baisha will go over the work with you in more detail. Yes, Lady Ningguang. Okay, let's go. Before I get into specifics, I want to start by giving you the big picture. As a member of the Liyue Qixing, Lady Ningguang's every move is in the spotlight. Maintaining her perfect image at all times is absolutely essential. My usual job is to be her right hand, to maintain her image, and take care of all her worries. For example, arranging her daily schedule, picking out clothes for her, Dressing her? Applying her perfume? Uh, <clears throat> you misunderstand me. I, I am simply trying to impress upon you the sheer importance of the work you will be undertaking. 
Baisha has always been very passionate about her work. I can leave any task in her capable hands and rest assured that her performance will be nothing short of exemplary. I'm sure she was simply trying to share some of her enthusiasm, in the hopes that you may find it infectious. <laughs> Thank you, Lady Ningguang. Back to the topic at hand. Let's get into the details. Bai Xiao and Bai Wen handle tasks that require enormous experience, while I'm mainly responsible for organizing her daily schedule and making sure she is well fed, dressed for any occasion, and that all her needs are met. I can go through the methods I use and give you some pointers based on my experience to ensure that you are fully equipped to perform your duties. All in a day's work for the Traveler, hmm? Great, then I'll skip that and just get to the handover of duties. Currently, there are 133 items that have yet to be scheduled, 17 of which are high importance and... Yes, I did try to make a start in advance, but only got as far as roughly prioritizing the tasks before I ran out of time. I'll go through the most important items with you in more detail. If there's anything you don't understand, feel free to stop me with questions at any point. First is the periodic meeting with the representatives of the eight trades. After that, fielding opinions on revisions to the current tax legislation. Then a discussion with Lady Kuching on issues relating to time restrictions on land conveyance deals. Following that, there's a Q&A session with all the major commerce guilds. Right after that, there's... Yes, you do. To the uninitiated, scheduling may sound like a simple process of matching tasks to time slots, but there is actually far more to it than that. You need to take travel time into account, along with a whole spectrum of potential issues that can arise. Ample knowledge of all outside factors that may weigh upon your plan A is essential to devise a workable contingency plan. I assume this is all making sense. Unless you had any other questions at this point? Good. Then let's press on. We're tight on time here, and there's a lot to get through. And we still need to leave enough time for you to prepare Lady Ningguang's schedule. Already? Wow. You're a fast learner. Very good. This will be much more efficient. Wonderful. Then I'll be counting on you to provide my schedule for tomorrow. I'm grateful for your assistance. Now, I will leave you here in peace to proceed with your work. I still have a few items from today's schedules that need addressing. If anything else is unclear, you can ask by sure. Take care, Lady Ningguang. You factored in both priority and efficiency, and produced a rigorous and well-structured schedule. You've clearly considered it from every angle. Excellent work. You've got quite a knack for this. Please be here at the Jade Chamber tomorrow morning before Lady Ningguang wakes up and start preparing based on the schedule. With you helping out here, we will be able to focus fully on the auction. It will be quite a complicated affair. I hope so too. You must be exhausted. Make sure you get an early night tonight.
Yes, I'm already awake. I'll be out in a moment. I'm just changing. Good morning. Did you sleep well? That's good. I was worried you'd be a little uncomfortable. Now then, the schedule. Let's see what you have for me today. Item 1. Lunch at Leo Lee Pavilion with Miss Lua Chiao. Ah, yes. I remember the invitation. I need to make sure I'm well prepared for this. No, someone I've never met before. Today's lunch will be our first time meeting each other. <laughs> She's paying a high price for my time. And I intend to make sure she gets her money's worth. Otherwise, tens of millions of mora is rather a high price for a lunch. Even one at Leoli Pavilion. Wouldn't you say? That's right. Even at this price, there is no shortage of people willing to pay for a lunch opportunity with me. To be clear, I've never had any hand in setting the price. I too was rather surprised to see it become so expensive. Time is very valuable to me, so when I first came up with the idea, I made a rule that my time would go to the highest bidder. Gradually, it developed into a lucrative business. Yes, that sums it up very well. Most people looking to buy my time are business people who believe that whatever they spend now, they will make back several times over in due course. Naturally, for anyone looking to make a profit in a complex market, the bottom line is having the requisite experience and expertise. All I can do for them is share whatever insight I may have. As for how much my insight is worth in terms of Mora, everyone has their own idea. There is no standardized way to measure something like this. You are a very lucky person, you know. You get to sit in on this lunch for free. In the hands of a professional business person, the kind of information you'll be exposed to would be worth, well, tens of millions of Mora. There's no need to be nervous, of course. Now, let's have some breakfast before we leave. Did you organize this entire breakfast? I know what's going on, then. Please, sit. Have a taste of the Jade Chamber chef's cooking. This kind of food tastes far less satisfying if left out for too long. What do you think? Is the food to your liking? Oh. Don't forget we have a lunch later. Save some space, or you might miss out on some even better food. Still, I'm happy to see that you approve of my culinary tastes. On occasion, usually everyone is too busy for a leisurely sit-down meal. There is an awful lot to get done most of the time. Breakfast also isn't usually so lavish, hence my surprise when we got here. I actually thought you had cooked it all yourself. Relax, I'm just joking. 
Baishar probably made arrangements yesterday to add a few extra dishes to the breakfast menu. You willingly took this work on, knowing that it would be tedious, and you have worked diligently. My secretaries and I are very grateful to you. Treating you to some food is but a small token of our appreciation. Breakfast sets the tone for the rest of the day. You can't compromise on it. If you wake up to the same monotonous meal each day, you will start to feel fatigued even before you start working. Well, I'm done eating. We should get ready, then head off to Leolie Pavilion. I have some preparations to make first. Could you bring my clothes to my room, please? I need a change of mood, and a change of clothes will facilitate that. Who knows? Perhaps you will have a completely different impression of me after I change outfits. I already instructed Long Yang to have my outfit ready. You can fetch it from her. Thank you. I'll be in my room. Hello. How may I help? Ah, yes, of course. Please wait a moment. I'll go and get them. Here you are. Please give this to Lady Ningguang. Yes, this whole room is full of Lady Ningguang's personal items. Not just clothes, either. There are all kinds of jewelry and ornaments. Lady Ningguang asked us to rearrange this room recently. We're currently right in the middle of that, so everything's in a bit of a mess. That's why it took me a little time to find this for you. <clears throat> anyway, you can take it now. Thanks for coming to pick it up. Did you get it? Ah, this is the one. Please, wait for a moment. I had this specially tailored recently, and I must say, I'm really rather fond of it. What do you think? Be honest. I just want to know your first impression. Phew. <laughs> Thank you. I was actually a little nervous. Knowing that it has your seal of approval makes me feel much more self-confident. If you're second-guessing how you look, you can forget about looking glamorous. Even the finest garments in the world would look out of place on you. That's why your affirmation matters so much to me. All right, let's head to Leolie Pavilion.
Wang. Sorry to have kept you waiting. No, no, not at all. I know that you have a thousand different things to do each day. I'm very grateful for any amount of time you can spare from me. Great. Well, let's leave the formalities aside from now on and make this just a friendly chat. This is the Traveler. I'm assuming you've heard of him. He happened to be in Liyua Harbor today, so I invited him to come along. It's a rare opportunity to dine with him, too. Do you mind if he sits with us? No, not at all. On the contrary, I'm honored. What a surprise to be dining with the illustrious traveler, too. I've always been fascinated by you and your adventures. There's so many questions I'd love to ask you. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Where are my manners? I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> Look at me, getting all overexcited. I'm Luo Qiao, a businesswoman. I work mostly in the textile business, but recently I've been considering branching out into some other markets. That's what I wanted to ask Lady Ningguang for some advice about. I didn't know there'd be a surprise guest involved, too. <laughs> so, the rumors are true, then. Rumors? About what, exactly? You know... The rumors about the two of you, Lady Ningguang and the Traveler, having a, a closer than average relationship. You haven't heard? Come on, you must know that Lady Ningguang's every move is in the spotlight. That obviously includes her relationships. And if you didn't have some sort of special relationship, why would she invite you to this lunch right after finding out that you were back in Liyue Harbor? <laughs> Interesting. Yes, we do have a special relationship, but I don't see anything unusual about it. The Traveler is a national hero in Liyue whose actions have directly contributed toward the prosperity we enjoy today. Even putting aside my official status as one of the Liyue Qixing, I admire him on a personal level too. Oh, yes. Well, there is nothing unusual about it at all. I was just observing that Lady Ningguang now seems to have a second interesting character in her innermost circle. The first one being the captain. You're comparing apples and sunsetias there. Whenever Beido returns to Liyue Harbor, all she brings me is a headache. I've missed out on a number of extremely promising investment opportunities thanks to her. In fact, the timing is always so suspiciously coincidental, I can't help but wonder if she's doing it on purpose. Investment opportunities? Oh, do you mean the luminescent spine business? I hear that's been all the rage recently. No, something else. All the talk about luminescent spines is just empty hype. Oh, but isn't there some new technology from Fontaine that needs lots of luminescent spines to make it work? If it were really that profitable, those in the know would have kept it as quiet as possible. You have to wonder, if the news is spreading like wildfire, who's fanning the flames? I had my secretary do some analysis. The current price of luminescent spines far exceeds the profits that could be made on the end product. 
so I would advise you to be cautious. I see. Well, <laughs> I was planning to get your opinion on how to get started in that business. In my opinion, there are many people around with ulterior motives, making this a very risky business to enter into in the short term. Long term, it's very difficult to say, but I believe there's too much uncertainty to make it worth your investment. You worked hard to earn every more you own, and you should be just as careful spending it as you were making it. You think so too, huh? Okay, got it. If that's what both of you think, I'll take my time and not rush into anything. Maybe it'd be a better choice to invest this money into an industry that I'm genuinely interested in getting involved with. Lady Ningguang, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me today. I didn't know how much we'd get through, but you've answered every question I wanted to ask. Good. I'm glad I could be of some help. Now I see why you were able to become the most successful business person in Liyue Harbor. You think clearly. You are very knowledgeable, and you keep yourself well informed. <laughs> it would take me a very long time to come anywhere close to your level. You've been listening for a while. Are you getting bored? Has it sparked an interest in the business world for you? Ah. So you want to be my competitor. Well then, I suppose I'll have to start looking over my shoulder. Or how about this? I'll invest in you early on, before you make it big. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you. This lunch was everything I was hoping for and more. I can't wait to try out everything I've learned. See you next time. I'll look forward to hearing good news from you soon. Right then. Lunch is over. I assume you have something planned next? Although... I'm a little concerned about the auction. I wonder how my secretarial trio is getting along. Good, then let's do that. There are some slippery characters among the bidders, you see. So, even though my secretaries are very capable and experienced, I still can't help worrying for them a little. Come on, the auction is being held at Yujing Terrace.
Lady Ningguang, what brings you here? I couldn't help but feel a little concerned, so I just came to see how everything is going. We're about ready, and people are starting to arrive. I think we should be able to start on time. Very good. I think I'll host the auction myself. Huh? You want to do it yourself? Yes. Just in case anything untoward happens. I can take care of it myself. Then we'll leave the auction itself to you. But we'll be sure to lend our full support behind the scenes. Have you attended an auction before? Well, would you like to participate this time? You don't have to bid, of course. Just experience the atmosphere. All right then. Feel free to take a look around the venue before it kicks off. Check out the items up for bidding and see if there's anything you might be interested in. It's about time to start. Find yourself somewhere to sit and we'll kick things off. Yes? What is it? That's for you to make a considered judgment on. It's precisely what makes auctions so interesting, don't you think? Until the bids exceed the value of the item you're after, you can keep raising the price. If the bids go beyond what you can accept, then you let someone else take it. Perhaps this does not result in what you might call a fair price, but what it does do is identify the person who values the item the most. Yes. You should look forward to it. The first lot is a teacup from my personal collection. Bids starting at 10,000 mora. That's 10,000 mora for the teacup. Twenty thousand! Thirty thousand! Fifty thousand. Eighty thousand! Eighty thousand over here! Ugh, I'll raise that to a hundred thousand! What? One twenty. All right, a hundred and fifty thousand. Anyone else want to keep going now? 150 once? Uh, 
170. Uh, 180,000. <gasps> mm -mm. 180 once. 180 twice. 180 sold. <laughs> it's mine now. Okay then, moving straight on to the next lot. You seem to be getting quite into it. What a shame that you didn't manage to go home with anything. <laughs> of course it did. That's because I didn't come here to sell my things. I'm sure you must find it quite odd that all these everyday items could fetch such a huge price at auction. Since you're curious, why not go and talk to the buyers? I'm sure they'll give you the answers you're looking for. <sighs> Today wasn't my day. Didn't manage to snag much. There were too many bidders, and they all seemed like experts to me. I guess I'll just have to wait for the next auction. Someday, I'll be the lucky one. I may have paid an arm and a leg for this, but in the end, I got the result I wanted. <laughs> Nothing of Ning Wong's could ever be overinflated. I'm far from the only buyer who believes that owned by Ning Wong is worth paying a premium for. So how much I make just depends on how many people are even bigger fans of Ning Wong than I am. Want to know why I paid so much? Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? Because the previous owner was Lady Ningguang. Sure, the item may look pretty ordinary, but that's probably just because I'm not a connoisseur, so I don't know how to appreciate it. But I figured I'd buy it first, then go get it appraised by an expert. Then I'll be rich. <laughs> well, did you find the answer yet? That's certainly part of it, but every bidder will have noticed that none of these items have a particularly high going rate on the market in and of themselves. Despite this, they were all willing to pay very dearly for them. I wonder, is faith in me really the only factor in their appraisal of the item's value? You'll see shortly. The one who spent the most money will surely be the quickest to realize. If all I wanted to do was make some quick mora by exploiting their blind faith in me, I have a million more effective ways of achieving that than hosting an auction. Every participant in this auction was handpicked by me based on certain intelligence.
Lady Ningguang, uh, something doesn't seem quite right with the items from today's auction. As unlikely as this sounds, and please forgive me for even bringing it up, but I had to ask. Um, you, you weren't selling counterfeits today, were you? Counterfeits? Absolutely not. What motive would anyone have for making copies of things like these? They are simply ordinary items. And there was no coercion or enticement during the auction. Every bid was voluntary. Because we trusted you! Everyone knows that you love Mora, but we also know that you made your fortune through honest means, as opposed to uh, scamming people. You seem to have entered into dangerous linguistic territory there. You should know that unless you have evidence to support your outlandish claims, I am legally entitled to sue you for slander. Of course, if you have any genuine grievances about the auction, the lots, or the process, please enlighten me as to where exactly I went wrong. You... you... Fine. Yes, technically, it was all legitimate. Guess all I can do is take the loss. But if word gets out about today's auction, people are gonna start seeing you as a con artist. No one would dare do business with you after that. I guess what I'm saying is, is this really in your best interests? Let me answer that with a question. You claim that you were willing to pay a high price because you trusted me. But is that really the full story? What do you mean? What else could it be? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps it could be something to do with a lost item from the original Jade Chamber collection that has quietly made its way into your hands. <laughs> when the Jade Chamber fell, Countless valuable items from my collection plunged into the sea. I organized a salvage operation, but still there were many items unaccounted for. A considerable number of these made their way back into Liyue Harbor through means unbeknownst to me, and passed through several pairs of hands before finally ending up in yours, and those of your fellow bidders today. Wait. You mean... Yes. Everyone attending the auction today is in possession of lost property belonging to me. Or, to put it another way, they were all people who have had a taste of something that was mine and convinced themselves that I am someone to be taken advantage of. So I ask you again. Your high bidding price. Was it motivated by trust? Or was it greed? <clears throat> the sole reason I held this auction is to reclaim my treasured possessions. If you are willing to return what is mine, I will refund all the money you spent in the auction today. All right, fine. I guess... I guess I'll return it. You drive a hard bargain, like everyone says. I'll go and get it right now. Please just wait here. Despite his bad attitude, he cooperated in the end. Good for him. The issue was that all items of mine that have been fished out of the sea have changed hands numerous times already. 
Determining who has legal ownership would be an extremely long-winded process, with each item being assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Even Yenfei says she'd have a difficult time defending my claims. I could have bought them back, but it's not in my nature to pay twice for the same thing. Least of all, when they'd be looking to make a handsome profit from my misfortune. After making some inquiries, I found them to be most uncooperative. So I had to resort to this auction to finally put a stop to all this nonsense. <laughs> I just wanted my things back. Hardly an unusual sentiment. At most, a little childish, perhaps. Which is another reason why I didn't tell anybody about my plan. What do you think it was about the Jade Chamber that defeated Osile? Hmm. Well, I think it was a combination of the weight and the energy it contains. Its great weight meant that it hit Osile with incredible force, while the energy within triggered that spectacular explosion. Every piece of the Jade Chamber, from the stone walls and wooden beams down to the smallest ornament, contributed to its total weight. But in the end, they became objects of merchants' greed. It's hard not to get a little irked thinking about it. Thank you for understanding. Now I've got one of my items back. Let me show you what makes it so special. The secrets of history shine through in the relics that survive. And this one now has the story of another age to tell.